here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. And a nice bright morning. Uh, we commemorate the memory of Saint Scholastica today. She was born in 480 and died around 547. She was the twin sister of Saint Benedict. She concentrated, consecrated her life to the Lord at a very early age and followed uh, Benedict to Cassino, then to his monastery there. We know not a lot about her other than that but uh, she was a very holy woman, as there are so many holy women in history today. I'm celebrating this Mass for the repose of the soul of Keith Neville. And we also keep in mind his wife, Margaret, who is recovering. The eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins those things which have separated us from our Lord and ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we celebrate anew the memorial of the Virgin Saint Scholastica, we pray, O Lord, that following her example, we may serve you with pure love and happily receive what comes from loving you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the time when the Lord God made earth and heaven, there was yet no wild bush on the earth, nor had any wild plant yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, nor was there any man to till the soil. However, a flood was rising from the earth and watering all the surface of the soil. The Lord God fashioned man of dust from the soil. Then he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and thus man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, which is in the east, and there he put the man he had fashioned. The Lord God caused to spring up from the soil every kind of tree, enticing to look at and good to eat, with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. The Lord God took the man and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and take care of it. Then the Lord God gave the man this admonition, you may eat indeed of all the trees in the garden, nevertheless of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you are not to eat, for on the day you eat of it you shall most surely die. The word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. Bless the Lord, my soul. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up, you open your hand, and they have their fill. Bless the Lord, my soul. You take back your spirit, they die, returning from the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Let us stand to greet the gospel. 
Alleluia, alleluia. Our Saviour Christ Jesus abolished death and he has proclaimed life through the good news. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus called the people to him and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen to this. When he had gone back into the house, away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Do you not understand either? Can you not see that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot make him unclean, because it does not go into his heart, but through his stomach and passes out into the sewer? Thus he pronounced, all foods clean. And he went on. It is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean, for it is from within, from men's hearts, that evil intentions emerge, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and make a man unclean. The Gospel of the Lord. I recall a few years ago now, but not that many, when staying in St. Peter's Monastery in Yaffo, just outside of Tel Aviv in Israel, being shown out of my cell window, just below me, the roof of the house where St. Peter fell asleep and had that dream of the large sheet being let down with all kinds of food in it. And he heard a voice saying, eat. And he said, I can't eat because that food is unclean. And the voice said to him, nothing created is unclean. That brings us into hearing today Jesus, having said this before St. Peter's dream, about uncleanness. After defending himself against the accusations of some of the Pharisees and scribes about his not observing the traditions of the elders, Jesus now turns to the people. He enunciates what's for him is the main principle. Nothing that goes into the body from outside can make a person ritually or religiously unclean. What makes a person unclean is the filth that comes from inside their mind and spoken through their mouth or expressed in action. This was a major issue in the earliest days of the church and was dealt with by the Council of Jerusalem. And the story is told in the Acts of the Apostles. The first Christians were all Jews who continued to observe Jewish customs. But when non-Jews began to be accepted into the Christian communities, should they also be obliged to follow the laws and customs? It became clear that from a religious point of view, no food could be called unclean. And this helped to break down the barriers between Jew and Gentile. It has been pointed out that immediately after this, Jesus entered Gentile territory, something he did not often do in his own ministry. Even Jesus, even his disciples, seemed shocked by what he was doing, by his teaching. Jesus repeats what he says in the light of the kingdom he was proclaiming. No food that goes into a person from outside can make a person unclean. Real uncleanness is in the heart, in the mind. Real uncleanness comes from inside people, in the form of evil thoughts. All those things that were listed, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, etc., etc. This is a real uncleanness. And the source is in ourselves, not what we eat. As Christians, 
we do not normally worry about clean and unfeed, unclean food. We might observe uh, to absorb, uh, avoid meat on Fridays, but that's an optional self-discipline anyway. But we must be careful that we do not judge others by their observances or non-observances purely of external things. A person not taking holy water when they come into the church, taking communion in the hand and not the mouth, and all those little things that may be a personal devotion, a personal preference, but they're not important of themselves. We may have got rid of the problem of unclean foods, but there are many other ways in which we focus on trivial externals while ignoring the real evils, the places where real love is absent in ourselves. We need to look for us to ourselves to see where we have become unloving. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the virgin blessed Scholastica, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who were consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Edward, and Saint Pius X, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your majesty we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Scholastica, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lovely to see you all here on a nice, bright, sunny day, although it is still about one degree or zero outside. Still, we're told that that should kill off the germs. I don't know. It might kill us off first, but we don't know. Not if we have courage. Thank you to Maria and Vladimiro uh, for our stewards this morning and uh, to Nick, the unseen Nick at, at home manipulating the camera, which you people can't see, but everybody else can up there. They get the close-up version of us, which is uh, a bit frightening, but uh, you are at a certain distance. You're, you're spared that. Take care and uh, keep away from the virus. And I see the Guildford Live is going um, like the clappers this morning with people rushing in to be uh, vaccinated again. So the millions are going up. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.